Hi, this is Cynthia Ortiz. It is March 14, 2022, and we got to do a second podcast for today because Mr. Perry jammed up one of my bank accounts so I couldn't get the order mailed out to the Supreme Court that they asked for. Um, it is due tomorrow. I can drive it up. Let's let's uh, see what he does to fuck that up. Every Here's one thing you can take to Vegas and bet on it. Mr. Perry will try to make me fail. Mr. Perry, why'd you and Calvin sit down and talk about how to jam up my uh, banking app so I can't my money wouldn't get transferred or I mean what I, I lost one account because you, you know you fucked with my money so much it just it overdrew and now it's closed so thanks for that I've worked I worked really hard to try to get my credit back up from the first time he devastated and ruined my life he'll type in my phone I'm gonna ruin your life you're gonna let me and then you're gonna lie about it just be and I'm like yeah I don't think so I need you to look back, Mr. Perry, on all the things that have come out about your criminal activity, alleged criminal activity, um, since you met me. You guys are not getting it. It's unbelievable. We don't even have words for this. When you cause me a problem, you get told on, and then when you do, I t I'll say something. They were recorded talking about XYZ well before, like on the 12th of February I, I did, right? And then when you do it anyway, McNamara email, Mike was drugged email on and on and on it was this i was supposed to do right so i go down and i get the certified order and i'm going to make copies and stuff and my bank card is jammed up and i call i okay so you have nine till nine o'clock to get to the post office well i gotta make copies of it right so i call uh i call the banking people and they're like oh the apps j um, jammed up until nine o'clock oh is that right nine o'clock right at nine huh Right when I need to go mail. So what that means is now I got to take my whole day tomorrow and drive up to Oklahoma City and take it. Barring they don't cause yet more problems. So look, we're noting it right now for our record in our court, Mr. Perry. The ones that, you know, they keep telling me beforehand. He's going to cause this problem. And that was this. you and Calvin sat down and, and, and decided this, this fuck up. Let's cause this problem for her and that problem for her. Every day y'all try to make me fail, don't you? That's pretty pathetic that you have to do that. So, um... Believe me, our team is like, I think it speaks highly of your character that they feel the need every day to have meeting after meeting after meeting trying to make you fail. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an attorney. you got five seasoned attorneys, and you can't just do normal court. You can't leave everybody alone and go live your life, get off your fat, lazy ass, stop watching me work, and you go work. And then you won't need a lie, will you? And you'll have an alibi, which you don't have now. So, I mean... There's this chick named Monica at uh, Sensations that I danced with, and that chick was really good on the pole. <laughs> um, and in some ways, uh, like, way better than me. I mean, she could do some really cool stuff. So, I mean, I could ha have two choices, Mr. Perry. I can either practice and become as good as she is, or my friend Heavenly, or Hardly, or I can grease down the pole and try to make them fail. And, and at the end of the day, I'm the one that looks bad, not them. It's me that looks bad, not them. You're pathetic. You and Calvin. Who is Calvin to you? Is that you two that sat down and decided to do this today? Okay, so he's decided, uh, you know, I've gotten threatened with, you know, we're going to make her mad, and we've gone over that. Uh, um, yeah, I, hillbilly. Wow, hillbilly. Uh, we don't live like that now. This is the 21st century. Is that you, Calvin? Is it working out for you when you do shit like that to me? I mean, your name is out there. How'd I get your name? Has anybody had your name out there before? Who are you? I don't know you. I don't know who the hell you are. So uh, I know Mr. Perry, and we, you know, we we have a lot of words we use for him when he's, you know, I can't say publicly, but uh, they're not nice. But that's what we think of him, shit on our shoe. He's so pathetic, he can't just go do normal. Just go do it right. Do the right way. Do court normal way. He has to do all these back underhanded and, uh, and in fact, they did that when I had my uh, summons. So there's already something on the court that has documented that they do impede court process. And uh, I think we did a podcast on the 12th of February about his intention. Uh, I've impeded the mail. And uh, I, got, I got in the mail. And I'm having, and then I call, and then you were recorded telling my landlord, we got this whole thing kicked out. Now we need you to kick her out of her house. And he got kind of upset with you, didn't he? We just had her sign a lease. I thought you said this was going to be okay. So how many people have you gotten kicked out of their house? 
You want me under a bridge? Fine, I'll be under a bridge, but I'm not going to be with you. I've already said that. I've said it repeatedly over and over and over. And I guess uh, one of those, one of his guys was like, is she not packing? Is it, are we trying to get her kicked out? Is she not packing yet? Um, well, there's a couple things with that. One is, I have, Perry took everything I have. I have of all of like three things to pack. You know this. So it'll take me like an hour to pack everything I own. And uh, everybody talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. As soon as she gets a new apartment, he'll take it away from her. He's an asshole. That's why he doesn't have a date. That's why he's not got a woman trying to go see him or hold his hand or be with him. He's been rejected and rejected and rejected and told on and told on and told on and told on. And nobody wants him around. Everybody's pissed at him. Right? Like those guys that were like... I don't, that's not his girlfriend. She won't have a thing to do with him. They, she sues the shit out of him trying to get a protective order. And she needs one. If anybody needs a protective order, it's her. And so, um, what we want to do is, uh, you know, I, I, when I have, for my girlfriend, I don't call her friends and family at all. But if I do, it's not to find, you know, it's to find out what she wants for Christmas. Not, I get information from her car so I can take it away from her. She's going to subjugate. You're an abusive man. You're very sick. Because if you're a healthy, well-rounded individual and somebody that I would want to be around, you don't, you don't treat women like that. And uh, Mr. Calvin, I, I don't know who the hell you think you are, really. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, but I don't know you. What I know is I don't like Charles Perry. And now your name's out there because you're helping him, right? Who the hell are you? Who are you to Charles? You guys fucked my whole bank thing up today, so now I got to drive it up tomorrow. Okay. Whatever. And Mr. Perry's typing in my phone. I want you to cry. I want you to cry. We, we've, we've established for the record, Mr. Perry, that you're a sexual sadist. The witness said you, he likes getting women upset so he can go, and I'm quoting, rub one out. This is, you're a sadistic. You're like Andrew Cunanan type of guy, aren't you? A little bit Andrew Cunanan, and a little bit Jeffrey Dahmer, a little bit BTK. You're, you're that bad, aren't you? You know, it's only a matter of time, and you know you're going to jail. You know we're building a case against you and Calvin Nero as well. We're not, I mean, you, get, you go after me, it just pisses all my guys off. You don't know who they are. It's a need to know for a reason. It's a need to know. And now we've got other police departments going, God, it, here's the thing that I believe as far as law enforcement goes is we take care of our own. And um, I'm, we're watching the police department over in Tulsa not take care of their own. If you'll throw your own under the bus, you'll do it to anybody. So I'm not, I, I don't, now I don't trust them. I wish I could. Everybody wishes for that, TPD. The guy goes, I, I mean, if they're that frivolous with lies and they'll crap up anybody's life, even one of their own, somebody within the cop family, Mike Neely and what they're doing to Cindy, I don't, and they call me and they want help on a case, I'm not going to put my name on that. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. I want to be able to trust the people I'm working with. I don't know what I'm putting my name on. I don't know what I'm getting myself into. But I'm going to tell you this. Law enforcement takes care of their own. They don't become the bitch of a sex weirdo. They just don't do it. And I know you're trying to subjugate me and you're making me suffer. And you're making Michael Neely suffer. And you're getting caught. More than you have ever gotten caught in your life, Mr. Perry. You want to impede me from doing this. I, we said it on the 12th. You were going to. You were recorded talking about it all damn day, Calvin. All damn day. So, that's on a court record somewhere, Calvin. You may have gotten away with this all your life. Okay, but this time it's different, isn't it? You're seeing things happen you've not seen before. When he takes her money and pesters her, things don't go well for us. We're seeing things happen we've not seen before. So, what happened last time you guys got my money? The December 18th false arrest was a bust. We wanted to get her back on that pole, but he took, I ran all her money off, so she quit going. Do what you do. I'm going to get into that. Hold on. Okay, so I've given the example of my granddad who um, got onto a dispatcher for having an uh, I'm sorry, a city councilman that was his friend that was having an affair with the dispatcher, and they were taking up a lot of police time. And he went in and told him, you need to cut it out. Reasonable ex request, I would think. Well, the guy formed a committee within the city council that took over the police department and smeared granddad all over the place. Smeared my granddad. And I watched him go through a lot of adversity over that. I read some of the articles. They were horrible. 
It was bad for him. But he didn't apologize and he didn't back down and he went through the adversity and he had a good attitude about it and he was still kind to everybody. And then when he died, before he died, guess what? Look, his name is on the front door of that police department where he was chief. He's got a whole room dedicated to him. And you know what we all, uh, you know the name of the guy that did this to him? No one knows. <laughs> no one remembers. Uh, you know, he's faded off into history as an asshole. And my granddad was honored. My granny said she got hundreds of letters from people that he helped, thanking them because he believed law enforcement is called to relieve suffering caused by crime. And he did it. He lived it. He taught me that. I watched him go through adversity. And now I'm applying some of the things that he taught me. It's going to suck. It's going to suck hard. But keep a good attitude. Still be kind to people. It's going to come out okay in the end. Look at Joseph. I've given the story of Joseph many times. So Joseph is 12 and his brothers are bullying him. They were assholes to him just beat him down and beat him down and he's praying to God make him stop please Lord make him stop and God shows him a dream that they're all bowing to him and his dad gets him a coat of many colors and he's thinking oh good they'll like the coat right they'll bow to me now they won't bully me anymore after this they got it got worse they take the coat from him they rip it they sell him into slavery and he's going God oh, that's not what God showed me was gonna happen that's not even close he becomes the head of household for Potiphar. He worked hard for Potiphar. He did his best. He kept a good attitude. He didn't give up. He becomes the head of household for Potiphar. And then Potiphar's wife hits on him. Kind of like Charles hits on me. I don't, I'm not interested in you. You're a married man. What the fuck are you thinking? I moved twice to get away from you. Where is Jackie when you bother me? Your wife, Jackie, you remember her? So your kids, Jordan and Matthew, where are they when you bother me? Betrayed them. You're betraying your family, dude. So, Joseph, uh, Joseph, she hits on him and he's like, no, I'm not, I'm, no thanks. She frames him for a rape and he ends up in, sla in jail. So he's in jail for fucking 12 years and um, they put him in charge of product management. So he's managing all the products in the jail and, um, then Pharaoh has a dream. And he can also interpret dreams. So Pharaoh has a dream of seven fatted calves and seven starving calves, seven grains of wheat that's healthy and seven that are withery. And he goes and he's like, uh, he, he's like, tell, I need somebody to tell me what the hell that means. It's kind of a freaky dream. So they, they call the, the baker, the cup bearer, right? One of them that lives, there's two of them in jail with Joseph. One, they have a dream. Joseph interprets it. One is going to die and one is going to live. Well, the one that lives goes, oh, hey, I, I know this guy, Joseph, in jail. They bring Joseph in. Joseph says, well, you're going to have seven years of good of good prosperity and seven years of famine. So during the years of prosperity, save food to eat during the years of famine. Otherwise, everybody's going to starve to death. So Pharaoh, guess what Pharaoh does? Immediately puts him in second in command of all of Egypt. Just like that, he's a prince. Just immediately, all of a sudden, his life changed. He's got a big palace to live in. He's got a family. He's got. They give him a wife. He get, gets a wife. He starts having kids. And Egypt at that time was one of the most powerful countries in the world. So here's jo Joseph. He's thinking his brothers are going to bow to him in the backyard, right? Wrong. Imagine if he demanded God, God, you do it my way now. And he gave up because God didn't do it right then, right there. Lame, right? Brothers are all bowing to him in the backyard. Nobody sees that. That's not how God had it in his head. God's like, nope, got a bigger, bigger thing here. It's in a palace. I'm going to have your brothers bow to you in a palace where you're second in command of one of the most powerful countries in the world. How about that? Wow. Was it worth the wait? I can't imagine it probably was. He didn't give up. He didn't get a sucky attitude. That's what he did. So he, they say he had to leave the room and cry. I'm sure he was thinking of overwhelmed at finally God answered my prayers. Finally. At the end of the day, it came out right. At the end of the day, for my granddad, it came out right. Kept a good attitude. Kept gone. And uh, Mr. Perry wants to make me cry. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to cry. So our shrink tells me, um, oh, the other thing Joseph said was, what, you meant for evil. Because now they're bro the brothers feel bad. They're like, we're sorry. We treated you like crap especially since you're second in command of the most powerful country in the world. 
in charge of product management. He saved also, by the way, two countries, Egypt and Israel, from dying during the famine by keeping food put away and managing product. He became an expert at it, having to do it in jail. So he had to go through the jail thing to learn how to pro manage product. And then when he becomes princess, prince of Egypt, he, he, he uh, like, you know, he knew how to do it. It was training for what his life purpose was, right? Okay, so my granddad here, things come out at the end of the day. He's telling his brothers what you got, what you meant for evil, God used for my good. And I forgive you. So that was an amazing story of healing in a family. That was an amazing story of how God brings you through crap and uses the crap for something for you. And don't give up when things look shitty. Don't give up. Because at the end of the day, you'll be honored if you keep a good attitude. And a lot of times when people start giving up on God is when they want it now. I want it now. I'm going to stop my feet. I want what I want and I want it now. And that's very selfish and stupid, by the way. It's, it's juvenile. It's daycare. Kids in the daycare act like that. We've all grown out of that. Um, most of us have. Um, and you demand your own way. And everybody else can just go, sh you know, whatever. No, it's not how that's supposed to work. How that's supposed to work is... You're, everybody's supposed to relieve suffering somehow for each other, no matter what it is. If you have nothing, find what little you have and relieve the suffering, and that's how that's supposed to work. Mr. Perry believes that, and Mr. Robertson and Calvin, they all believe that what's yours is yours, and what, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine. I'm going to take it. And they're getting told on and told on and caught and told on and caught because it's really not setting well, well with uh, a lot of good people. So, okay, so hang on. Okay, so Shrink tells me, um, you cannot cry because Mr. Perry has a sex problem with it. So you can't cry where he can see you. And um, if you feel like you're going to have a hard time with that, um, have the guys get in touch with me and I'll get, I'll get with you. But you really can't cry. So I've had to learn, unfortunately, he thinks it's a date. That's what she said. She goes, Mr. Perry will have a, he gets, um, and again, I'm talking about crime causation. This is not lewd and lascivious. She said he gets sexual gratification. He's got a sexual deep dysfunction. And he gets sexual gratification. And it sounds like Calvin and Robertson may as well. I don't know. Um, but they certainly seem to need to see a doctor if you want to hurt women and you get off on that. Something's wrong with you. That's not normal. You got mommy issues and you're not smart enough to keep that in your own family. Because we don't, as men, men are not to act like, you know, dominating and domestic violence. Read the law. What's the law say? The law defines domestic violence as economic abuse, violent subjugation. Only 1% of the population acts like you. 99% of the population disagrees with what you're doing to me, and they don't like it. Then you're making everybody mad. So when you get told on, Calvin, you need to think about that. You just made a bunch of the wrong people mad. So, um... And Mr. Perry, one of the guys helping me, is about the same height as Jason Moore, maybe a little bigger, and in, he's in shape. He has a beautiful wife who adores him, and you don't have that. And he wouldn't dream of treating a woman like you guys treat me. Wouldn't dream of it. In fact, he has acted to protect me over and over and over and over from you. And when you get go at me, it pisses him off. So what you, got, what you guys just did to me, just did for me today, there's a thing called interference with contract with intent to coerce. You'll be charged with that. Interference with contracts and commerce. Grand larceny with intent to coerce. When you cost me money, they're just going to ask for more restitution. You just give me another cause of action. It doesn't change anything at all. So all three of you need to know that. When you called my parents and said that money that her grandmother worked very, very hard to leave for her, don't give it to her. We don't want her to have money. We want her starved into a lie. My guy said, every day that that money should have been yours, is gonna. there's interest that will be charged to your parents until the day Dave and Charles called and Calvin called and told them not to give it to you. And then it's gonna, they're going to pay the interest on it from that day until you get it. But I'm going to make sure they pay you back every penny for every minute of your time they wasted every problem they caused every penny and they cost you so let them do it it's like cha-ching you get more money later from us mr perry you're not you are being stopped 
So please understand the words that I'm saying. It seems like you're not understanding what people say to you, Mr. Perry. You're not being allowed to hurt me. You're not. You were recorded on the 12th of February, 2022, discussing how to impede my appeal. There's going to be criminal charges associated with what you're doing. So there's no one letting you do anything, and you need to understand that. No one is going to allow you to do what you talked about that day. You're doing what you do. It will be a criminal charge later from the people helping me that you had six years to get me to slip up and talk about, and you didn't get anything out of me. I have help, sir. Don't ask who told. And then act like I don't have help. I don't have superpowers, Mr. Perry. But when I say no to you, no means no. I have help. Help that I can get a woman to like him, a date. And he's one of us, about 40 guys. And you have nothing. You're by yourself. You're all rejected, alone, nothing. There's no woman trying to have a date with you or go to dinner with you or hold your hand. That's not what's happening here. You've had 12 years of you're a rejected delusional stalker. And that is the best you can do. And the more you hurt me, the more of your crime comes out that you guys hid all your lives. Mike Neely was drugged. I knew it two months, three months before that came out in a deposition, did I not? So what are we going to do with that information, Calvin? How do you know Charles Perry? What is your relationship with Charles Perry, Calvin and David? You want to impede court process, be prepared to pay for it at some point. Because I can't I don't have superpowers as it turns out. It's funny that you guys think that. Go into a court of law and explain how I have superpowers so that I can continuously over and over and over starting with McNamara email say what you what you were planning to do before you did it. And then you guys are so brilliant. I mean, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's so easy. It's not even fair. She knows. She knows well in advance. We know she knows. And we're going to do it anyway. So she can say, I told you so. What is that? Did you fall down and bonk your little heads on the pavement? I've never seen that kind of stupid. Anyways, so I've learned um, how to change my focus. Boom, like that. When, he, when Charles does something to devastate my life, and the things that he causes, the problems he causes, it's not that, that you know the, cl the clothes cleaner didn't have my clothes ready on time. I mean, these are devastating, horrible problems that take people years to recover from, m me included. You don't get over this kind of shit. And uh, so we have to learn to, uh, like, I can't cry. I can't do it. So how do I function? How do I keep going? How do I keep fighting? How do I keep my attitude straight? <laughs> I immediately changed my focus to what I'm thankful for because there's always something to be thankful for. And I listened to this guy. This guy talks about uh, if you're not in a hospital dying of cancer with no hope, you're having a good day. You're having a great day. It might look sucky for you. You might be going through shit a lot of people couldn't imagine going through, but you're not in a hospital dying of cancer. So be thankful. And that's what I keep my mind on. I think of time after time after time after time, something bad happened and God brought something good from it. There's always a reason. Like the 18th was a bust. They took her, Charles and Dave couldn't get her, their hands out of her wallet and she couldn't go to Manford. We worked for weeks on that. Right? Didn't y'all? I heard, I heard a recording of y'all talking about it. So this is one way. And the only, the other thing that gives me, um, kind of some strength is I know that there's people watching me go through this that I don't know and probably shouldn't be watching me go through this but here they are so what do I do with that well I look at it like you know five years from now ten years from now they may go through something like this and they're watching me to see how I handle it and I may show them by example here's how you handle it and it may get them through a trauma or a, a tragedy that uh, the, otherwise they wouldn't have made it through had they not sat and watched me go through this. And maybe it'll give people hope they didn't have hope before. Maybe it'll give people um, a desire to, you know, to uh, do the right thing, even when it's hard to do the right thing. It shows my character, Mr. Perry, every time you get pathetic and you got to pick on me and you got to try to make me fail. You need to understand that in a lot of circles that you know nothing about, you have made me a fucking hero. So there's that. This guy's great. I He keeps me, um, he'll help you keep your attitude right if you're going through something. For you to succeed, 
for you to understand that you got a mission. Don't let the losses keep you down. The mind is a powerful weapon. Resurrect yourself from the pit of darkness. When the rest of the world says no to you, you say yes. There's power in your voice. You have to commit to everything that you do. Don't stop now. Don't give up on now. Keep it moving. Take control of your life. Believe in yourself, but make no mistake, you are worthy. Every day is a new day and another opportunity that others may not have. There can be no excuses. Life. How beautiful it is. How amazing it is to be able to rise up in the morning and have that sun shine on your face rather than on your grave. What makes life so unique and so beautiful? It is beautiful because Whatever you have that you may be facing, what you may be dealing with, life is still good. Life has so many moving parts, but life is always good. Every day is a new day and another opportunity that others may not have. This life that you have been given, this life that you are temporarily holding on to, this life that has been just given to you for only temporary reasons, has more meaning than you can ever imagine. So many people in the world take life for granted instead of realizing that you have to take the opportunity to live it the best way you know how. Now on this journey of life, you're gonna face a significant amount of circumstances, a significant amount of challenges. You're gonna fall into areas that you cannot understand. And maybe it's not in a position for you to understand at that moment. When you start to feel that you are in a position that you don't love your life, then shame on you. Because your life is a beautiful thing. And no one deserves to ruin it. No one deserves to control it. No one deserves to steal your joy. Your life is your life. And you have the right to live it the best way you can. You must discipline yourself and take full control and responsibility for the outcome or whatever it is that you are seeking at this moment. There are gonna be times that you will see something that is standing right before you and you may not even believe that it's a reality. You may think that it's an optical illusion, but this opportunity that you are facing that is standing directly in front of you, you must own it and take charge. You have to commit to everything that you do, but you must make sure that you are committing to the possibilities and not the negativity. I'm letting you know right now that you are a possible individual. You are a possible being. You are a possible reality. And this is the time for you to recognize that. 
Don't stop now. Don't give up on now. Find the way that you are recognizing within yourself and build on it. Just like clay, you must shape it. You must mold it. And you must make it a masterpiece. How many times have you said you couldn't do it? How many times did you say that you didn't have the strength? How many times? How many more times? When is enough going to be enough? When are you going to rise up and realize your true potential? When are you going to commit to your real truth? Because your words matter. Okay, so I'm going to hold that or put on pause right there. Your words matter. <clears throat> So imagine getting up every day for 12 years and you're facing someone is trying to cause you to lose something major like your house or your job or your house and your job and your car or your life and your freedom. And I'm threatened every day by Mr. Perry, Mr. Roberson and this Calvin person I don't even know with death, false arrest. I get followed around. I get police escorts. I call them police escorts. I get followed around by police all the fucking time. I have since I got here. And I didn't come here to pick a fight with any cops. I came here to get away from a crazy man who's a criminal. A deeply sadistic, dysfunctional criminal. Imposing and forcing himself on me. And he's a burden. I came here to get away from that and not have a conflict. I didn't want it public. I, I didn't make it public until I got here. And I had no choice. Because there started to be that grand larceny with intent to coerce, subjugate me, violence, domestic violence, economic abuse. I have mommy issues and you're going to pay for them. I'm not smart enough to not Jerry Springer my personal family crap all over your family. Yup. Um, go talk to your mommy about it, guys. I don't want to deal with it. I came here... And I, didn't, I hadn't told anybody, but a few people knew. A few more people knew as I was getting ready to get out and leave Dallas because Mr. Perry made it unbearable. He starts to button into my dating life. That's none of his business, is it? I wasn't interested in you. I said no to you. That's it. You and Potiphar's wife. You're the same. What's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. And I decide that. What if Skeet Workman decided to do to you what you've done to me? I don't love you. You make me want to bar you make me barf. And I've said that over and over and over. There is not a day that I try to see you. I'm kicking you off me. I'd like a protective order against you, sir. Where's your wife Jackie and your kids when you betray them, chasing a woman that doesn't even like you? I would like to know that. So my words matter, and any local cop, you need to understand a couple of things. One is my granddad held that bar on law enforcement excellence very high for me, and I have those expectations of cops. I have all the respect in the world for you, but we have problems in police. There's no such thing as a perfect organization anywhere. There's n it doesn't exist. And we always continue to, make, to try to make changes for the good in whatever we're in, whatever the organization is, I would hope. We want to evolve, and we always want to improve, and we always want to become better. And you can't do that if you won't talk about the problems. And we have the right to redress. And we have the right to say, I'm not sure I like the police escort I get all the time. If you want to have a police escort, why don't you have them get in my car and just ride with me? Instead of following me all around town. In fact, Lucky complained about that. And I've showed that quote from him more than once. Mr. Perry asked us to harass her all the time. He wanted us to pull her over. He wanted us to do this and do that. And he claimed he was being harassed. But we could see pretty quickly. She never called us. She never bothered us. He called us constantly. Him, Matt, and Josh. Wouldn't fucking leave us alone. Why not us to pull her over? Why not us to check into this and that? Can you get her on this? Can you get her on that? And there was never anything to it. They were making crap up. Wasted my time. I don't know. I, I had other shit to do. They were doing the harassing is what was happening. And I've showed that quote. Repeatedly, over and over and over and over and over. When there is a individual like Mr. Perry, he's going to reoffend and reoffend, and there's more victims and more victims and more victims, and we all have choices with what we do with that. And at this point, 
my guys are telling me we have another police department that will not that won't help them anymore if they need an assist on something I, I haven't heard from them but if they ever call me I really am not interested when they took her police report and gave it she's a cop family they took her police report and gave it right to the offender and then he obstructed justice committed perjury had her illeg illegally incarcerated and she lost her evidence got her, her name smeared everywhere uh, that's not how we do cop family how many other women has he done this to she's cop family so she caught it Chief Hall's granddaughter. And uh, then they did, you know, weren't there for Mike. Well, if you'll throw your own under the bus, what are you going to do to everybody else? When you bring me something, how do I trust that it's real? There's a real crime here. How do I trust you? I'm not going to put my name on something that there's a question on. You've been frivolous with the truth, and so I don't trust you. And you bring me something, I'm going to go, I don't know. I'm, you know, I don't think I'm going to help you because I'm not. I've seen what you did to some other people that was wrong. I've seen you, you participated in the devastation and ruin of somebody else's life. People that were your own. And if you'll do it to your own, you'll do it to anybody. It's a cop family. She, I, four generations of cop, it doesn't get more cop family than me. Might too. So if you'll do that to your own people, you'll do it to anybody. So you bring me a crime, I'm not going to trust you because I saw what you did to them. My buddy over here was working on that case. I, I know what you did. I, I didn't think it was cool. And I'm not going to put my name on your work because I don't trust you now. We saw the same thing when there was a Derek Chauvin thing and a call nationally for the defunding of police. And I was like, no, we can't do that. But we do need to make improvements. I, as a citizen, expect to see that. I, ex as a citizen, expect excellence. Coming from somebody, four generations of police, I expect excellence in law enforcement. I expect it. Why wouldn't I? Are we paying taxpayers put a roof over your head, food on your table, clothes on your kids' backs? Are we doing that so you half-ass your job? Or you protect a criminal who goes on and reoffends and reoffends and reoffends, and then we end up with a situation like Unbelievable on Netflix with Marco Leary when some cops got sloppy and the guy reoffended and reoffended, but he went to a different jurisdiction. You going to pick on the victim and re-traumatize me that way? Think of, thankfully, I, I listen to stuff like this. I know who I am. I'm very comfortable in my own skin. Very, very comfortable in my own skin. And my words matter. This is me lobbying. I'm not picking on you, Tulsa Police. I'm lobbying you. If you are a state senator, uh, I'm sorry, not state. I didn't do state. Federal senator, United States senator, or a United States congressman. And I would walk into your office and say to you, this thing is affecting citizens negatively, and I'd like to see it changed. Here's what I'd like to see done. You're the person that can do that. This is that. We can do better as a society, don't you think? For victims. So the next family that gets blown up, the next family with, two, with children that Charles decides he's going to target and ruin the, her, her, that person's life so he can go, like I said, the, 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 the witness said, rub one out. I mean, you're sitting here watching him do this to me. You've, you took my police report and gave it to the offender, and you know he obstructed justice, and you know what's supposed to happen in a police investigation. You know that. And you know Mike had nothing on him. You are cops. You know good and well he didn't do that. And you know Charles and Dave and Calvin, or whoever else was involved in that, would have come out and said, we didn't do the vandalism. We didn't do the murder. It's clear Mike didn't either. Let's find out who did. We don't want that suspicion on us. Had I not been poisoned, Mr. Perry would not have obstructed justice. He would have come out and said, get her tested before you arrest her. We got to prove first that this police report was false. Get her tested, her blood tested so we can see what's in it. Because I didn't poison her. And when it comes up negative, he'd have a big drama queen, you know, press conference. See, I didn't do it. She lied. Now I got a legit arrest. You have emails and texts of what I'm doing right now, talking about a political issue that I was upset with you over, and there's no such thing because there wasn't. I didn't have anything to do with state, state politics in Texas, nothing. I did uh, the State Board of Education. That's not the same body. It's a different elected body from the legislator, le legislature. Pulling up behind my home is not what you do to pass a law in Texas. You're confused as to what your legislative duties are, and that is not my problem. I haven't lived there for eight years. 
I knew all kinds of people. I was in politics all my life. I knew all kinds of people that if I really didn't like something in the legislature in Texas, I would have called them, not you. You didn't have any power. You're the new guy. You didn't know anybody. I'd been in there three years. I knew all kinds of people. So you didn't matter. There is no issue. Name the issue. Where's the email about it? I'm very vocal with what I think. I've repeatedly requested TPD and Chief Franklin, please develop a threat management unit for stalking victims. Not just for me. It's not about me. It's about all stalking victims so that they don't end up dead and your murder numbers go down. They do it in LAPD, does it? A lot of departments have that now. Then they have experts in dealing with stalking. It's a hard crime to deal with because you have one thing, like they've said, you know, one thing that happens and by itself, maybe uh, maybe that's not stalking, but then it starts to become a pattern and, uh, you know, stalking is a pattern of conduct and it's hard to nail down, right? So uh, and you might believe it, you might know it, but going into a court of law, you got to convince a jury. That's a, whole new, that's a whole different thing, isn't it? I'm not trying to beat you down. I didn't come here for that. I didn't, I'm not Wyatt Earp. I did not come in here to mop up. You know what I came here to Oklahoma to do? Be rid of Perry, cut off all contact from him, and rebuild my life. And that's it. Mind my own business, have peace, raise my child with family around in a good, positive environment so that he grows up to be a productive, successful citizen and not a criminal who's all traumatized by a stalker. Thankfully, both of my kids turned out pretty good, but we had to do a lot of talking through things. I had to do a lot of this, showing them videos like this. We're going to make a decision right here and right now. We are absolutely victims of crime every day. I'm telling my son every time I go to work, I may not come home. He's threatened death and false arrest. Which day is he going to decide to carry one of those two out? Go call Craig and Dana if that he does carry it out. Hopefully he's just full of shit, but we don't know. We can't take anything for granted. Well, guess what? He did carry that out, didn't he? And he did it after I said it in the McNamara email to my son's dad. We already had a family meeting about it. We already had family discussions about it. He's going to do a false arrest or kill me. And he tried both, didn't he? And if he hadn't done the poisoning, he would have made sure I had a blood test. Instead, he made sure there was no blood test. Mike didn't get a blood test too, oddly enough, until after he's given Narcan, which changed the composition of his blood he came to. We don't know now what the composition of his blood was when he was knocked out. He wasn't tested in a timely manner. That's a Brady violation. The evidence wasn't preserved. you got to preserve evidence. Mr. Powell made zero effort to preserve my evidence, showing he had no intention to go into trial. It was just an intimidation act. Now, if there wants to be a cop the following me, you're more than welcome to get in my car and drive around with me. I don't care. You're more than welcome to sit outside my house and watch everything I do. You're going to watch me being a normal, law-abiding citizen. I'm not a criminal. I didn't come here to pick, on, pick a fight with TPD. I came here to live my life in peace and rebuild all the broken ruins Mr. Perry caused. And to ever, never, ever have any further contact with him. And to not have a fight and not be a scandal. And that was my goal and that was the plan at the time. There was never a plan to have a disagreement with police. But since there is one and I didn't cause it, you did. You gave my police report to the offender. I lost my evidence that I'm the victim of a crime because you did. You put my life at risk. You have now have developed a reputation in at least one police department. They don't trust you because you did that to me and you didn't help Mike. And if you'll hurt your own in that way, who else will you hurt? So when you come in with some papers and say, I've got a criminal in your jurisdiction or whatever, <clears throat> how do we know that's true? I'm not a cop. I didn't say those words. Someone else said them. I'm telling you, that's a problem you might want to deal with now before that becomes a problem in more than just one place. Don't you think? We all show people who we are in the way that we live our lives on a daily basis. Right now, I'm the victim of a crime in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I have police from somewhere else who have saved my life over and over and over and over. 
I'm thanking God every day for that. Believe me. Because I if I didn't have that, I assure you I'd be dead. There was many a plan for that. And if they hadn't called me or if they hadn't got in touch with me and told me, don't go to work tonight because they're going to do X, Y, Z. Whatever. Uh, I know you need the money, but you're going to have to not have it right now because we want you to live. I would be dead. The 18th would have been a whole different day for me than it really than it turned out to be. And you know that. Everyone knows that. So the 12th, Mr. Perry, you were recorded discussing different ways to impede my appeal. And now we say, I told you so. He did it. Exactly what I said. He can't just go into court and be a man and stop being a coward and just do normal court. He's got me by far outgunned with attorneys. But this was another case where I got to rise to the occasion. I'm calling for attorneys. I didn't want to sue at all. I'm telling my attorney, I want this whole thing in the past. I never want to hear Mr. Perry's name again. I don't want to think about it again. But if he continues to pick on me and harass me, I'm going to have no choice. I'm going to have to sue him. I start calling att attorneys. Mr. Perry sees everybody I call. He's calling them. Tell him don't help her. So then I got to make a decision. Well, then I'm going to have to do it myself. I got to rise to the occasion. I hit the books. I did without food and I bought a law book. I did without food and I made fucking copies. I did without food and I mailed that shit to you. And I still am. And you know that. Because you're making sure my money is tight. Tighter than it's ever been in my life. I have no problem making money, Mr. Perry. Everybody's going, does he not remember what her, look, her life looked like before she met him? It's a whole different thing. It wasn't perfect, but it was much different than it is now. Much different than it is now. So, you are showing who you are, and I'm showing who I am, and the TPD gets to show who they are. I don't think TPD's story's over yet. Nobody's is until you're dead. I'm telling TPD, as a citizen, I expect better. I'm disappointed. I'm telling TPD, as someone with police from somewhere else helping me, they're hearing comments that aren't positive, that people aren't going to trust you because of what you did to me and Mike. How do we trust them when they bring us a case? If they'll put them two, those two under the bus, they'll put anybody under the bus. You put your own family under the bus, you'll do it to anybody. So when they bring me something, I can't afford to have my name mixed up with something that's a little frivolous with the truth, like those two. Character shows in how you conduct yourself every day. And it shows up even more during adversity. And I have a way that I deal with this is when Mr. Perry hits me with a loss, which happens every day, I get up every day and go, am I going to walk out the door and die today? Am I going to walk out the door and my car's gone or wrecked? That has happened. My car, I've walked outside and my car's wrecked. Am I going to walk outside and get followed around by a cop all day? It's fine. If you want to do that, just, get, just fucking get in my car and ride with me. I'll take you to tea. I don't care. But what does that do with the taxpayer dollars? I mean, is it necessary? Is it to intimidate? What's the purpose of it? I joke around and call, I got my police escort today. It's happened in different places. I mean, uh, for different reasons, a different way. Is he calling? Is, does, you, does, does Mr. Perry call you and say, chase her around, follow her around all day? What is this for? If it's a legitimate reason, okay, fine. If it's not, guess what? Taxpayers need you to help with the real crime and not just be used to her I think like he said I don't want to be used to harass this girl that's not why we're here for the two officers that came to see me at sensations they wanted us to just find a way to arrest you that was in August 2015 you know when my arrest was January 2016 you think people don't notice something wrong with this they do I promise my voice matters I'm speaking for me I'm speaking for Mr. Neely I'm speaking for every victim that he's ever hurt. I'm speaking for every victim that you are going to allow him to continue to hurt because you're not doing anything in Tulsa. My guys have a bigger case, and I've said that, and I've explained it, and I'm not going to go into it more. I can't. I wish I could. I, can't. I wish I could explain why the guy's not in jail now. I want the guy in jail now because once he's in jail, I won't have a day that is supposed to go, uh, you know, where I do X, Y, Z, and it blows up. Because Mr. Perry caused one problem after another problem after another. I had to drop everything I had planned and go do something else completely different and fix the problem. Him and David and Calvin. 
you three, right? Aren't you three the main, the main, uh, you know, problem ca causers, the drama makers? You got mommy issues, and instead of being smart enough to keep your Jerry Springer show within your own family, gonna ick and slime that over everybody else. Everybody's, you know, you somebody owes you something. You're entitled. Typical criminal mindset, low IQ, no impulse control. Is that how that works? I mean, we all have choices, and we have to live with them. We do. Like it or not, we got to take responsibility for what we do and what we choose. And whoever watches me go through this and can see what I do immediately when something like that happens, believe me, I get pissed. I'll scream and I'll yell and I'll rant. And I'll lobby. <laughs> I'll lobby. Please make a change that's for the better for everybody, not just me. It doesn't just affect me. It's about everybody. It's about all victims of stalking in, in Oklahoma. It's about all people that Mr. Perry and these guys want to hurt. And it's about you. Because guess what else? They just killed a cop. If they'll kill one, if they're a threat to one, they're a threat to all. And if you don't see it that way, you're not being very smart. You got to think like criminals think. You're in danger if they think you're a leak. You know how many times I've fucking lied, straight up lied? Because I was getting wind that this guy or that guy was suspected as a leak. I'm not going to let you get hurt. Believe me, if I could I'll redo, or if we had known Lucky and Mike were in danger, we'd have put a stop to that immediately. Well, I, we learned from that. There's shit times I've fucking lied. Those two guys, in t in, they came into, uh, pff, where was it? Oh, my work, Sensations. Those two cops that came in there in August 2015, months before Mr. Perry carried out that threat. And it led me to write a letter to the U.S. attorney. He's trying to use law enforcement to hurt me, to stalk me. They told me that. You know how I know they told me. They weren't comfortable with it. And I, to protect them, there was two things I didn't ask. They gave me their names. I don't know that those were their real names. Nor did, that's one thing I didn't ask. Is that your real name? What's your badge number? What department are you with? I didn't ask those questions. Because I knew by them telling me that, they're putting their lives at risk. They're a leak, wouldn't you say? Okay, well, I'm not going to say who those people were. There's a bunch, about 20 different jurisdictions that used to come in that club. There, Oklahoma has got a jurisdiction every block. You got, you know, you got Tahlequah, you got Muskogee, you got Eufaula, you got Shoto, you got Mays County, you got Rogers County. I mean, there's like every fucking block, there's a new jurisdiction. So I didn't ask them what de police department they work for. I, I, I didn't want to put them in danger. That's what you do for cop family, don't you think? Or a person, anybody. Just a person. That's a person's life. So I'm not trying to hurt your feelings and I'm not trying to pick on you. I didn't come here to pick a fight with you. I came here to rebuild my life and not have a fight. But since you've picked one with me or allowed one to be picked one with me, then what I'm going to do is what I've always done. Lobby. As a lobbyist, so to speak, a citizen with the right to redress, I'm asking you a couple of things. Rethink what you're doing. Because it's not setting well with other people who have different values and different morals and different ethics and different expectations of what a performance of a law enforcement officer ought to look like. And now there's questions on how do I trust these guys if they walk in my office with a case? Because they did something very egregious to, another, to a victim. Uh, I couldn't imagine doing that. Why did they do that? Who did that? We, uh, I've not asked. You know, I've never asked who's the name of the person that did that. I've, ne I've not asked. In fact, I've really not made a big deal out of it until recently. So, I didn't come here to pick a fight with you. You want to give me a police escort? At least have the guy introduce himself to me. Have him introduce himself to me. I'll take him to coffee. We'll take it. We'll tea. We'll do tea. Whatever. He wants to get to know me. Fine. Build rapport. You need to. Mr. Perry, Mr. Mr. Roberson, and Calvin, we've already said it over and over and over. You, you have some nefarious intentions here. We found out what they were before you did it repeatedly on a lot of things. When you do those actions, those are criminal actions, and there is someone somewhere that will take action against you at, at some point. So make sure you can pay for it because you will. And I've said that too. And you guys always ask, how did she find out? How did she know? Who are these people helping her? Who got her the Fabian puzzle? How did she know Mike was drugged? Before that was on the docket. And he didn't come out on his side and say, he, you can tell he didn't get in a fight. So who did that? And Cynthia, we didn't, we didn't drug her, test her. You made sure I wasn't 
I wasn't tested. Your own actions say we did this. Acts showing consciousness of guilt on both. You think people are dumb like you? They're not. They're not. In fact, if you think you're fooling people, I assure you, if we hear what you say, we know what a lot of people say, we know very clearly it's the other way around. You're being fooled. People are telling you what you want to hear, so you'll shut up and go away and not become a threat to them. Now, the way that I get through this, for those of you else that listen to this and aren't criminals, but if you go through something like I'm going through some sort of adversity a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, this is a great way to keep your head straight. And I can't cry because Perry thinks it's a date and we don't want that. So what I have to do is think about the, what he I shift my thoughts immediately. See what's going right in my life. What is good? I'm not in the can, in a hospital dying of cancer. It's a good day. Everything else can be solved. There are people, he says, Mr. Coach Payne here. I, this is on Motiversity. I've joined, I subscribe to Motiversity on YouTube. A lot of Coach Payne's um, videos are on there. I highly suggest everybody listens to this first thing in the morning when you get up. It's a great way to start your day. And it keeps your head in the right place. No matter what happens to you, you start thinking about, oh, what do I have to be thankful for? What's good in my day? And that's how I keep from crying all the time because I've lost significant things in my life, people that I love very much. I, I'm not talking to right now, so I don't, they don't get threatened as a leak. Oh, you're, you must be you leaking. I don't want you to say that to them, so I, I've stayed away from them. And that's not easy for me to do. I'm, you know, Perry wants me to lose my house. Okay, but everybody's talked about that, Mr. Perry, since before I got it, that you were going to do that. So you're just carrying out another threat. Threaten my car, threaten my life, threaten my money. It took me a long time to rebuild my credit. Now you ruined it already. And now everybody's mad at you. So when y'all sit around and ask, who told on us? Please understand what I'm saying. Understand the words. You pissed everybody off when you caused me a loss. And the way that I don't cry every little, of every little thing you do is I have plenty to be thankful for. I'm not dying in the hospital with cancer with no hope to live. There's, I'm, I've not been told by a doctor, you have cancer, it's terminal, there is no medicine for you. You're going to die. I'm not, I've not been told that. It's a good day. If you murder me, then, you know, it was my day to go. But today I'm alive, aren't I? I'm alive right now. I'm, I'm a voice of victims. I'm Mike's voice. I'm my voice. I'm Lisa's voice. I'm John's voice. I'm the Miller kid's voice. Because they think their dad was killed in a drunken brawl, and we all know that ain't it. We all know he was killed in the line of duty. And at some point, I will make sure he gets those honors or die trying. Because it means a lot to me that Chief Miller gave his life for mine. He really did. He believed that my freedom and my peace and my ability to rebuild my life was important enough that he died for it. He spoke up. And I wish we had known before. We didn't know about that. We didn't know about the brick. We only get, people can only get so much. We get about 98% though. That's a lot. I love people. I love people. I, I hurt for the hurting people. And I get angry at bullies like Charles David Matt, the, I mean, uh, jo, uh, Calvin, that just go around and get up every day and find out what can we ruin in someone's life today. I, I don't understand that. I'd like to kick your ass. It's my great honor to be the one to catch your crime more than anybody else. And to kick your criminal ass harder than anybody you know. Because I love people. I hate seeing them hurt. If I walk by a homeless guy and I don't have any money in my bank account, it's overdrawn. It's about to close. Thanks, thanks for that, Charles. Yeah, that you pissed everybody without, off of that too. I have more than one bank account. And then you jammed the other one up so I can't mail the thing today. Thanks for that too. At the end of the day, I believe it's going to prove out to be a favor. Kind of like the 18th didn't work out for you because you got in my wallet. I don't, I don't dance anymore where you had intended to do something to hurt me because you got my wallet. My guy's pulled me out. He's giving you canned food, and he's increased the risk. It's not worth it to be there anymore. Come, get, get out of there. Because if I'm walking out of there with evidence like Pinto and Mickey James and Terry Wagner's text, all these guys' text, Dave Robertson's text, and some money, it's worth it. I can handle the sting-ups. I can handle that, that kind of bullshit. But when you increase the risk, where there's a whole lot more serious things 
that what I would lose, and um, I'm coming out with fucking thirty bucks. Your little canned food there, your peanuts. You guys are cheap. It's I I don't. Anyways, uh, then I then I you know it's not worth the risk anymore. So you took my money. I don't go anymore. Now you can't get to me there. So you do what you do. It's gonna come out right. Um. So the if anybody watches, I mean, oh, that's what I think about. I think about all the things that are good in my life, everything that I have to be thankful, and I shift. I've learned how to shift my thoughts to that immediately. And go into what's the next step in the process? What is the next step in the process? What is the next step in the process? Where I'm constantly thinking about those things, and then I don't have time to feel sorry for myself and cry. And we've deprived Mr. Perry of a, you know, whatever imaginary bullshit date he thinks. I, I don't have any words. So I'm going to keep playing this for a minute. Keep it moving. Be productive. Be powerful. And from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business. This is it. Your journey can be seen. Millions and millions of miles away. And everything that you think, therefore you shall be. Be greater than your fears. Be stronger than your doubts. Because your mind is very powerful. Stop being sorry and start doing better. Better within you. Better than anyone has ever seen. Better than your mistakes. Better than your failures. Better than those that doubted you. Lift yourself up. Stop with the excuses. Stop doing things that you know that is not right. Doing all the things that will make you better depends on how you think, how you feel, what you do, how you proceed. There are going to be times that you're going to want to give up, but you don't have the permission to do so. You must carry on the good fight. What great is in you? If you don't believe of your greatness that you possess inside, what good is your greatness? If you don't stand on it, how can you hold on to who you really are inside? The water may be a little rough, the tide can be coming in, but you got to keep on fighting. You got to keep on swimming. This path that you are taking right now, this emptiness that you are feeling right now, it is only a temporary match, a temporary thing that is going on inside of you right now. It's only temporary, but it is necessary. It is necessary that you struggle. It is necessary that you feel alone. It is necessary that you have to continue to go forward. This is not the time to quit. This is not the time to give up. Even when you think you're weak, you have a way to be strong. Yes, darkness is upon you. But there will come a time the sun will shine. Dawn is coming. The sun is going to rise. And you will see the light within you. Nothing can stop this. Because that light has already been there. That light is embedded in you. That light exists in you. The time has come. For you to succeed, for you to stand tall, for you to understand that you got a mission, and your mission is not done yet. Every day it's not going to be a good day, but every day is a blessed day, because you are above the ground, you are walking tall. There is no time for sorrow. Because misery has no place in your life. The mind 
is a powerful weapon. Cause no matter what's happening. So what do they say about me? What's one of their big complaints? We've not had one with this much longevity. They're trying to break me. You know, I was trained not to be broken. And you've even made me better at it. Thank you for that. You made me better at a sting op. You made me better at everything. I had no idea I could go into a court of law and scare five attorneys who are seasoned and five pathetic little defendants so badly they won't let me in court. And they have to do things like jam up banking apps so they don't work and I don't have money to mail. So I have to take my whole day and drive. That you're that pathetic. I appreciate the compliment. You showed me what I am made of and that longevity comes from training and you made me better at it, Calvin. Charles, David, Josh, Joe, and Matt, and all your attorneys. And so for that, you showed me what's inside me. I'm successful, or you wouldn't try so hard to make me fail. So no, I don't have any reason to cry, Perry. I'm, I'm extremely honored to be the one to catch your cry more than anybody you've known in your life. I'm extremely honored to be the one that said... That you guys say, when he pesters her and takes her money, things don't go well for us. We're seeing things happen we have never seen before. How did she find out what we were going to do? We worked for weeks on that 18th thing, and that was a bust. Somebody tipped her off. Somebody with power. Somebody that cares about me and every victim, every woman, every child that you made cry. And tell me. I don't have a reason to cry. I'm very thankful that you're bringing out the things in me I didn't know I had and made me better at the things I was already trained and good at. You spent six years trying to get me to slip up as to who these guys are helping me and you couldn't get anything out of me at all. I got a shit ton out of you. I got really good at a sting op. So you made me successful and I'm now the one that has longevity you've not seen before. So, I need you to understand that you did me a favor. And what you meant for evil, God is already using for my good. I'm a voice of victims. People that you hurt. People that don't know they have a voice. People that you devastated and ruined their lives, like Officer Neely. I have stood by him since the beginning. As soon as we found out he was drugged for sure. There's not a day that goes by I've not beat the drum for his innocence and for the disgust we all have for you for what you've done to them and you're seeing things happen you've not seen before there's another thing that I have is faith and a lot of these guys that work with me also have faith and we pray a lot and we watch God answer prayers I'm gonna tell you a story real quick when I was uh, in medical I was having a hell of a time with Presbyterian Healthcare in Albuquerque getting me getting approving my claims and paying my claims I worked with all the other ones, Cigna, Aetna, Blue Cross, Presbyterian for some reason was giving me a hell of a time, and they insured most New Mexicans. So I really needed to work through that problem. And <clears throat> I had talked to Congresswoman Wilson about it and uh, her staff, and um, one of her staffers says to me, um, there's going to be a health fair, fri health fair uh, Saturday, and um, Congresswoman Wilson will be there, and she likes you, so go over there and find her. She's going to give a speech, and you can just go up and talk to her afterwards. And so, um, and, and um, she, she was already familiar with what I did because I invited her to come speak at a organizational meeting that I put together, and um, we, she did, she came and she spoke, and she met one of my patients, and Congresswoman Wilson it was very kind and it broke her heart to see my patient and she actually started crying for the patient she was very empathetic so I knew that I could go talk to her and maybe find a solution um, I, I I'm praying the whole way there God help me find her help this work out help this because I've got patients um, paperwork on my desk that I can't do anything with and they're, they're you know they've got severe severe problems here so I want to help them and um, my family needs the money this is what I do for a living and I help people at the same time it was a dream. It was a great job. I, I got burned out on it. I got burned out on fighting with insurance companies. I don't want to do it again. But at the time, for that time in my life, it was perfect. And um, so I, I go to the health fair and I get there and I'm and I'm looking for Heather and I can't find her. And there's this man following me around everywhere. 
And I'm like, what the, what in the hell? Uh, you know, I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Follow me everywhere. I'm like, I got a stalker. I turn around and I introduce myself to him. And I'm joking. He wasn't stalking me. He was just kind of interested in meeting me. And at the time, I didn't know. He actually had a person that he, it wasn't romantic. He had a, a wife and I had, I was married. I guess, um, I don't know what the hell made him follow me around to this day. I don't know, but he did. He followed me all over the building. And I finally turn around and I'm like, uh, um, sir, I'm, I guess I should introduce myself to you. I'm Cynthia Ortiz. And he says, I'm David Scrace. And I said, oh, are you? And he says, yes, I'm the president of health, uh, Presbyterian Healthcare. Golly, that's the company I'm having a hard time with. He's following me all over the building. God answered my prayer, just not the way I thought he should. You know, I'm asking to see Heather. And um, I, I, what turns out is the, the president of the company I'm having a hard time with follows me all over the building. And I, sh I shake his hand, I introduce myself, and I tell him, I'm glad to have run into you. I'm having problems getting paid from your company, and I have a very unique um, service that I provide, and I, I would like to talk to you about it. Can you do lunch with me? And he said, absolutely. So he and I went to lunch, and he got me on as a provider. I never had a problem with a claim after that. Perfect. That's one. The, that's the way God does things. We pray, and things may may not go. It didn't. It didn't happen. The bowing of the brothers did not happen in the backyard, when Joseph thought it should. It happened in a palace, the way God thought it should. Bigger. God thinks bigger than we do. And um, it happened in in uh, in this situation where I don't meet with Heather Wilson. I mean, I. I I, I wanted to meet Heather Wilson and talk to her about my problem. I thought she could help me fix it. And um, it turns out I met the actual person who could fix the problem, the president of Presbyterian Healthcare Plan. So that's where my faith is. That's what I get up and think about every day. Now, Mr. Perry, I really need you to understand the words I'm saying. It very, very frustrates a lot of people that you don't seem to get what's being said to you. I don't like you. There is nothing romantic there for me at all for you. I, I, you're a peep and Tom, and that's a turnoff. That alone would make me go, yep, nope, you're not my cup of tea. You don't fit in with my crowd. It is illegal, sir, to peep for a reason. There's a reason everybody doesn't do it. It is not how you get a date. Abusing women by taking their money and things and people that are important to them is another abusive thing to do. O.J. Simpson did that to Nicole. He very much intentionally drove wedges between her and her family. He did it on purpose. You got a controlling problem. You got a manipulative pro problem. When you violate a woman, she's not going to like you. You'll not get a date with me ever. I've made my wishes very clear. You're forcing yourself on me against my will, and I don't like it. I'm not interested in you at all. I'm not attracted to you. I'm repulsed by you. Even prisoners are repulsed by guys that do what you do. I'm not saying that Cyril Wick said that of Jeff Epstein. Jeff Epstein put cameras in his own home, and it very much upset her, their, his friends. How much worse is it, sir, that you would stoop to the level of voyeurism in a woman's home without her consent or permission? It is a disgusting rape crime. I've been physically raped. I've been voyeur raped. It's both bad. It, dis it is nasty. I don't like it. I've asked you to quit it. I've billed you. That's never happened to y'all before. I've sent you a bill. I expect to be paid. You're not going to go into our criminal case and assert a defense that I consented and never expect, expected payment because my guys are going to ask you for payment. There's a thing called restitution. And if we don't get it in that, I can sue you again. You're giving me another cause of action every day that you rape me in my house against my will. You don't have my heart. You'll never have my heart. And the, the most important thing is killing people cop killer I know you're a cop killer I'll say allegedly you've not been convicted in a court of law yet my family was police I took that personal those two police officers were trying to help me I took that very personal there's not a day that goes by it doesn't weigh very heavily on my mind I completely understand the pain that you've caused his family and I and I only feel a part of it. I, I promise you I understand it, but I don't feel it like they do. I'm not, I'm not living with it. What if that was an officer at TBT, TBD that covers up for you? What if it's the policeman that gave my police report right over to the offender and you did it to him because you all of a sudden decided you thought he was a leak or she? I would come to that person's side the same. I wouldn't even think twice about it. I've gone without electricity, sir, and food. 
You made sure of that, and you pissed everybody off when you did that to me. And you made me a fucking hero in a whole lot of circles. You know nothing about. Character. You made me show my character. I had a choice. I'm not going to lie for you. I've told everybody on the planet. He is trying to starve me into a lie. And I've said that, sir, for many years. Not just now. It's not something new. It's old news. And then when you do it anyway, everybody's going, she, she knew. She told everybody. What's she supposed to lie about? This is an I told you so moment, actually. You, turn, you are a turn off. You are betraying your wife and your children, and I don't understand that. Your kids aren't good enough for you to just do the right thing for them. You're embarrassing them with this. Chasing a woman doesn't even like you. Taking her money, ruining her life, thinking that's how you get a date. What attracted me to my ex-husband and to Daryl? I'm, da I'm dating Daryl. And uh, I, sh I should have explained the situation. Um, the miracle that was in the Tahlequah thing the other day. Um, you know, Charles is taking all my money and running off my business like he does now. And uh, I had, uh, I was sick and tired of asking for help. And I got up one day and I was like, God, I don't want to have to ask for help one more time. Please don't make me. I'm tired of asking for help. I shouldn't need help. I'm not stupid. I know how to make money. I've always made money. So I, I please don't make me ask for help again. It wasn't five minutes and the phone rings and it's Daryl. I know your rent's due today. Do you have it? No. I'm in Tahlequah. I'll be right there. I didn't have to ask. I didn't have to ask. God answered my prayer just like that. Sometimes he answers like that. Sometimes it takes longer. There's a struggle for a reason. You find out what you're made of. If God had, per if, if you hadn't called uh, attorneys and told them not to help me, I wouldn't know that I'm actually pretty good at, the, at doing the practice of law for myself at least. I've learned a lot. It, 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 you know, I, I, I'd go dance. You'd run my customers off. I'd go read my law books. I'd go read case law. I'd go study. I've learned all kinds of things. It's been very, very interesting for me. It's been very good for me to ha to learn that. So a COVID happens, our our club gets shut down. I'm like, uh, I don't know how long I'm going to be without work, but I've wanted to finish college. So since I have nothing to do and I don't know when we're going to reopen, I'm going to go back to college. So now I'm about to start my third year. Well, no, I just started my third year of criminal justice college where I'm learning about police ethics. Ethics in policing. This is my second class on that. Giving the victim's police report to the offender is not that. Chasing a victim of stalking around in a patrol car is not that. I made a joke about it. I have a police escort. Harassing the witness or a victim of a crime is not that. I'm studying it. I got an A. I have 3.89 GPA. I know exactly what's supposed to be and what's not supposed to be. I was raised in four generations of police. I know how to read evidence. I read mics. My guys don't help me with everything. I don't need it. A lot of times they'll ask me to look at something and then t tell us what you think. And I'll tell you, I'll tell them what I think. Yep, that's what we thought too. And I'm good at sting ups, but they're better. They've talked to you, Charles, face to face. They've talked to you, Dave. Uh, they've talked to Matt, Josh, Joe. I mean, they've talked to all of you. I know Calvin. I know your name, Calvin. Why do, how do I know you? I can't do that by myself. There's no way. There's no pay. There's no way. So to any of you watching me go through these, this adversity, it's gone on for 12 years. I wake up every day with a threat to my home, my car, my life, my safety, my freedom, my reputation, food. Basic needs are being deprived so that Mr. Perry can think that's a date. It didn't occur to him everyone doesn't act like that and they can get a date. He can't. He gets told on. So I would encourage anybody, whether you go through this, whether you're going through something similar now or something bad, maybe not this bad, um, or something in five years from now or ten years from now, I would encourage you, if you're watching me, to focus on what you think about. Because you can change the movie in your mind the same way you change the one on the TV. It is not hard. You make a list of things you're thankful for in your mind or sit down and do it on a piece of paper if you need to. And uh, 
I think I've described my son was in the hospital with uh, appendicitis and his appendix ruptured and he had this big gaping wound in his little side and it was hard as a mom to watch your kid have this gaping wound in his side and they left it open a little to drain all the poisons out of him and I had to flush it with saline it was oh my gosh it was bad so I'm a mess I was a mess until I walked down the cancer ward of that same hospital and I'm seeing six-year-old little babies with no hair and mom and dad sitting there wringing their hands and the next room a ten-year-old little boy same thing parents are wringing their hands and the next room a two-year-old little girl bald as she could be parents wringing their hands on and on and I'm going oh my Lord God I have absolutely nothing to complain about. My child is going to get out of here in a couple of days and be fine. It was a little scary for us at first, but he's going to be fine. And these parents are being told your child has cancer and they're dying. And they're being given chemo and they're throwing up and their hair's coming out. And we had a friend that lived with us in Albuquerque for a little while from Roswell um, Eric's sons, uh, he died actually of leukemia when he was six. While he was going through chemo, they would have to come to Albuquerque. And we had moved from Roswell to Albuquerque, so they came up and stayed with us while he went through chemo. So I watched it firsthand. What a little child goes through when they're sick with cancer. It's, it's, uh, it's brutal. Most adults can't do it. Oh, you know what? Uh, I mean, it's brutal. And that young man would go in the bathroom and throw up and throw up and throw up and throw up and come out and just had the big smile on his face. You wouldn't know he was dying uh, based on the look on his face. He always had a positive attitude. He always had kind words to say. He never acted through a fit and stomped and how, why is this happening to me? Never once did you ever hear him talk like that or his parents. And um, so as a parent, knowing that your child is gonna die, especially that young six years old, two years old, 10 years old, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you put one foot in front of the other. But I was thankful that day and that time that my son was in the hospital. It wasn't me in those rooms. And however bad my day was watching my son go through what he's going through is nothing compared to that. So when you have a, a battle in your life and you feel like everything's falling apart, it might be. It might be falling apart. But unless you are dying of cancer, uh, you're going to be okay. And even if you're dying of cancer, but think about if you're not dying of cancer, maybe you lost your job, maybe you're going to lose your house, maybe you're going to lose this, maybe you're going to lose that, and it's just stuff, stuff that can be replaced, but a person can't. Once you're gone, you're gone. Until you die, you can always become better at whatever it is you want to be better at. And you can always grow, and you can always show who you are and what you're made of in your character. And when somebody assaults you to try to make you fail, Pat yourself on the back. You're doing something right or they wouldn't bother. You're a success or they wouldn't try to make you fail. Always focus on what's the next step in the process. What's What do I have to be thankful for? That's all I think about all the time, every day. And that's why I have longevity they've not seen before. And nobody's kicked your criminal asses harder than I have. And that was never my plan, Mr. Perry, Mr. Robertson, Calvin. My plan was to come up here. And thinking that I'm dealing with a normal, logical, reasonable, prudent individual. That once I said, I don't want you to be contacted by you again. That would be the end of it. That they would be normal. That they would respect my wishes and the law. And I wouldn't hear from them again. And I could begin to rebuild my life and have peace. And raise my child. And not bother anybody. And that plan got disrupted and blown up. By an individual who's got a mental insanity problem who then a tri got gathered up more people just like him. Those are your choices. We all live with them. You reap what you sow. You already are. When you invade my privacy, my guys invade yours, and I find out what you just said, like on the 12th. I listen to them all day, Sin. They're talking about impeding your appeal. This is not the first time I've said this. Review the broadcast of the 12th. So you did what you said. You did what the recording said. You proved out a recording. You wanted to ruin my finances. You did. You proved out another recording. I have another cause of action. They got another crime. You're, it's another charge. So, or comply with the law and leave me the fuck alone. Because you're a menacing 
and I don't like you, and you're not my type, you're not my cup of tea, you don't fit in with my crowd. You chose that. You want to sit around and find a way to make me fail? You're making me a fucking hero in a whole lot of circles. I didn't come here to pick a fight with anybody. And Tulsa Police, I'm not picking a fight with you either. I'm giving you realistically, here's the situation. And we can't make changes if we don't talk about them. We can't. What do we do? I mean, pretend it's not there. Weeds, there's no weeds in my garden. There's no weeds in my garden. And when there are weeds in your garden, it's taking over all the pretty things. You have to kill the weeds. You have to talk about them. You have to go get weed killer. And you have to begin to prune them and pull them out. Pull out all the bad shit. Or it will take over your garden. And your garden is no longer beautiful. You no longer have a good reputation. A stellar reputation. Because now you got guys going. If they'll do that to their own. They'll do it to anybody. They bring something and put it on my desk. I'm not going to be confident it's uh, truthful. I want to be confident it's truthful. I want to believe they're telling me the truth. If they happen to call me. I want to believe that we all do, try to do the right thing to do because it's the right thing to do. And if there's a, somebody comes to me and says, we got a, we got a, 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 an offender in Tulsa that we think might, have, might be in your jurisdiction now, I'm not going to trust them. I may, I may not even talk to them. I got to know I can trust them and they can't trust them if they're going to be frivolous with the truth with their own people. If you'll do it to your own, you'll do it to anybody, everybody. This is a cop family. That that mean, that mean matters to me. That makes, in my head, that tells that sends me a message. These guys can't be trusted. So don't get mixed up in anything they're doing. Because it could tarnish your reputation. And I don't want that tarnished. So you got to choose for yourself. You got to do what you do. You want to have a, you know, me escorted around. Okay, what am I supposed to do? You want me to take the guy to coffee? I mean, what do you want me to do? What do you, what do you want? What is it, What am I supposed to do with that? I mean, I, I, I don't even know. Do you want? Wait, I'll take him to coffee if you want me to take him to coffee. You can ride with me if he wants to ride with me. I, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. But make sure that that's a good use of taxpayer funds. And there's not more serious matters he needs to be attending to. And if Perry called him and said, I want you to follow her around. Well, that's not really a good use of taxpayer funds now, is it? Lucky didn't think so. Lucky didn't think so. So, this is Lucky's words, I believe. I wasn't told who it is, but it sounds like, a lot like what what I was hearing him uh, that he was talking about. They are wasting my time. Uh, they're wasting, taking time away from citizens. And I don't appreciate it. They want us to harass her. For him, for him, and I'm that's a, that's not why I'm a cop. And I heard the same thing from those two that came into Sensations. That's not why I signed up to be a cop to pick on women. I signed up to be a cop to protect women from guys just like that. Abuse. Look at O.J. Simpson, what he did to Nicole in the months and years leading up to the, that murder. If you think he didn't do that, you're you're, you're slow. He did that. I mean, he, he wrote a book, of What If I Did It, and then he detailed out how he did it. So, it's double jeopardy. He can't do anything about it now. But um, a lot of people won't have anything to do with him after that. I could tell. I could tell I'm going to tell you right now. When I'm watching uh, the verdict being read, and uh, if there was any doubt in my mind, there was it after I saw the look on his best friend Robert Kardashian's face. You could tell by the look on Robert Kardashian's face he did do it. And Robert was shocked. At the verdict, he was like, oh my god. You don't beat someone down if you have a good character. You don't do it. You lift up. You find ways to lift up. And now I'm saying is, as broke as I am, if I have any cash in my wallet at all and I happen to walk by a homeless person, I give them some money. I mean, I, that's supposed we're supposed to relieve suffering, cop or not. It doesn't matter. You help each other. And that's what makes the world go round. That's what makes us each... Be who we are. Be better at what we are and what we can do. And to make a world a, a safe and a good place for our kids to be raised in. And we want to teach them to do the same. I, taught, I told my children right from the beginning. We're victims of crime right now. <coughs> we all have a choice. Are we going to be victims or are we going to be victors? Are we going to use this to let us become better people? Or are we going to cry and whine about it? I'm going to choose to let it make me better. I'm going to use it to let my life give other people hope. I want it to give other people hope. Fabian made me hope again. I want to give other people hope. I'm going to pay it forward. Daryl made me hope. I'm going to pay it forward. 
And when I'm going through adversity and people are watching me go through it, I'm going to give them hope in the way that I handle myself during the adversity. And if I'm, if I'm, if I was a failure, I wouldn't have people trying to make me fail, would I? If I was a liar and a cheat, I wouldn't have people trying to make me lie, would I? And I can see what I can do. I, wow, I can buy a book and learn how to practice law. Um, and, and I don't practice for anybody else, just me. But maybe someday I'll go to law school and, and do that. I don't know. I, I'm at least halfway through school um, with a bachelor's degree. And I'm learning about, you know, the criminal justice uh, thing. But, uh, and I grew up in it. And I believe that some that someday and even now I can help people. So anybody watching me go through this is going to see how I handle myself in the adversity. Just like I watched my granddad. I'm very proud of my granddad. Anybody that knows me at all knows that there's nobody I'm more proud of than my granddad. I watched him go through adversity. I watched him handle it right. And I watched him receive honors at the end of the day. And it wasn't right away. It wasn't a year later or, ten, or two years. It was a long time um, before his name's on the front door of that police station when he went through that so joseph spent 12 years in jail learning a trade that he would then need to perform as the you know at the palace becoming second in command of all of egypt which was one of the most powerful countries in the world at the time and he saved two nations what if he had given up when he didn't get his way as a child what if he had stomped his feet through a fit and i give up on god and i hate god and i'm an atheist now or a Satanist now. What if? How many people would have died if he hadn't handled that right? It could be that serious for you if you go through something. It could be that serious for me going through this. I don't know. But I know that I'm going to keep my mind on what I want my mind on. That's the only thing I can control. I have other people trying to control every little thing in my life. But guess what? There's one thing I control and only I control it. And that's what I think about. And how I react to what happens to me. And I choose to think about good things and what's the next step in the process to get us all free. And so I have longevity they've not seen before. And I let me tell you, I listen to Coach Payne. I listen to Coach Payne almost every day. Uh, I listen to him a lot because uh, I believe that you feed your mind with good things. And um, that helps you f keep your mind on what you need to keep your mind on. And and that will make you stronger or weaker depending on what you listen to. It, it's like I said, you're mo you're you're gonna think about something. I bet the best way I had it put was uh, Anthony Robbins um, described it as like you go to a party, and uh, you you're 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 sitting you're sitting there in a chair watching the people in the party talk and whatever, and you see you watch two people laughing and joking around, and you're gonna walk away going that was a fun party to go to, and another guy goes to the same party exact same party, and he's watching two a couple in the corner fighting. And he's going to walk out and go, that was the suckiest party I've ever been to in my life. It depends on what you focus on. It depends on what you focus on. Your mind can is powerful. It can accomplish a lot of things. To your, You might surprise yourself what you can do once you make up your mind. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm, it's going to suck at times. It's going to be hard. But I'm going to do it. That's, that's all there is to it. And I'm going to be able to look back. And um, have my kids be very proud of me and not ashamed of me. And that's basically our legacy. One day at a time, we make our legacy. And Tulsa Police, I'm not trying to fight with you. I didn't come here for that. I'm lobbying right now for some better. I'm lobbying for better, more excellent, higher standards, better ethics, um, excellence in law enforcement for victims. So there's not any more after me. So after me, that's it. There's, they're done. And for the development of um, tr skills for stalking victims. Because most premeditated murder is preceded by stalking. Whether it's a stalking case or not. You got a, pre you got a guy. You got, you know, Mr. Jones wants to kill, uh, m you know, Mrs. Jones is, you know, whatever. He, there is an affair or something. And so he starts following the guy around and finding out where he's. When's the best time to kill the fucker? And there's stalking right there. And maybe mis maybe the victim knows beforehand I'm being stalked. And my wife had an affair with this dude. And I think he's after me now. I don't know. I don't know what hits your desk. You do. So clearly if it's important enough for LAPD to have a threat management unit, why wouldn't we want one? 
So I'm lobbying for that. If you don't do it, I'm not going to hate you. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to accuse, accuse you of some, something you're not doing. Um, but what I'm going to say is, is that if uh, we could have that, yeah, I think it would be beneficial for the people of Tulsa. And I think that I, uh, whoever gave my police report to, over to Mr. Perry and caused me to lose my evidence, I'm going to ask you to now, because nothing we, we, we can always change things until we're dead, right? I'm going to ask you to now provide an assist in putting a stop to that. I get it that Mr. Robertson is, I get there's some mafia, whatever, here. Uh, I, I lived in Vegas. There was mafia there. A lot, a lot worse than uh, what's here. And I get Mr. Roberson, and you know, every he, he he has a very high, you know, Mr. Roberson. In all fifty states, there's a bad guy with mommy issues that's not smart enough to keep that within his own family. That thing, he's got a god complex. Every state has one, just like you, and Calvin. So, why is that? I'm supposed to be shocked and dismayed by you. I know what you can do to me. But you're not watching what we've been doing to you. Because if I'm finding out it beforehand, I can't do that by myself. Clearly you know that. And so you go down to the Vegas Strip and you tell us, us people from all over the country, from all over the world, do you know who I am or do you care? They're not gonna. They don't. You don't matter. I mean, you really don't. I'm, I, I appreciate the fear that you're causing people in Oklahoma. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling that fear. I'm not. And I know what you've tried to do to me. I know what you have. I know you've tried to kill me more than once. I know there have been, there have been uh, food delivery drop-offs that you were going to take my car, and I was told to bail. So the power that is behind me is more powerful than you, or I would be dead, and my car would have been gone. You're using, You're hacking my app, and you tried to do that. Okay, so we know that. I didn't come here to pick a fight with either one of you. you. You're afraid of losing your power. Well, here's the thing. Again, every state has a bad guy just like you with a God complex who has mommy issues that they didn't bother to keep from icking and sliming and Jerry Springering that all over everybody else. We, don't, I don't care. I really don't. What I've asked you to do is leave me alone. Just leave me the hell alone. And the more you don't, the more I start quoting y'all. So you choose. You choose. I'm going to live under a, a bridge before I go anywhere near Mr. Perry. That's my choice. My decision's made. You're not going to see me packing to go to Texas. I have all of like three things left because Mr. Perry took everything else I have. It's going to take me maybe an hour or two to pack my shit. You wanted me to move out. You made that happen. I got the letter from the landlord today. Thanks for that. So I can say, well, I did tell you. I told you so. So you did what I said. You always do. You're caught planning it. That's premeditation. That's malicious of forethought and intent. And we got you. And so, um, and, and again with filing the appeal. And um, you guys do what you do, and I'm going to do what I do, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thank you in advance. And tell you now what you meant for evil, God's already used for my good. I'm not a Satanist like you. I'm not. I don't subscribe to that. And um, you're welcome to do whatever you want to do. But make sure that you can pay for that because you will. It, there's a thing called restitution after a criminal case. And if not that, so more civil, more civil uh, litigation to, to remedy what you took that I can do any time. So when you cause an injury for me and you cost me more time and more money, things don't go well for you. You're seeing things happen you've not seen before, so make sure you can pay for it. Otherwise, leave me the hell alone. I'm not bothering you. I didn't come here to pick a fight with you. I came here not to have one and to rebuild my life, my, my own business. And thank you for the compliment. You wouldn't try to make me fail so hard if I weren't a successful, effective person, would you? So duly noted, that's what you think. You have uh, surely other better things to do than bother me all day. And um, so I think pretty much that's it. Um, but imagine this is how, not imagine, I mean this is how everybody feels about what you're doing. It's insane. Leave me alone. You want. I don't want proof of this. Please leave me alone. Hey, man. 
leave women the fuck alone when they're in public when they're doing anything you don't have the right to their attention you don't have the right to step into their personal space you don't have the right to them especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to but even when they're not unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumb ass then leave her the fuck alone find a date a different way okay it's not clever it's not cool it's not cute it's garbage it's absolute garbage behavior and you're a garbage person if you do it i don't care if it's in public it doesn't fucking matter you don't have the right to her and you need to leave her alone and this is bacon uh mr perry um this is the kind calvin and uh, Robertson, These, this is the kind of power that's behind me that can get me this in jail. Mr. Perry, I said no to you for 12 years. You're eternal. There's a reason other men don't behave like you behave. It didn't occur to you. Other guys don't do this. Maybe I shouldn't either. You're never going to get a date with me. I don't like you. I've repeated that over and over and over and over. Get a grip on reality. Control yourself and get the hell out of my life. Get the hell out of my life. I don't like a man that's going to starve me and torment and torture me and take everything I have. That's not my thing. I don't like you because you act like that. I don't. I don't like you at all. Now, please stop contacting me. Please leave me alone. And the people that are helping me have the kind of power to get that to me in jail. Mr. Perry, they heard what I said I wanted the first time I said it, you have to have everything repeated over and over and over, and you still don't get it. Cause and effect. When you bother me, you guys see things you've had not seen before. You get told on. And then I say, well, I told you so. When you do it anyway, you knew I knew you were playing in it, and you did it anyway. Over and over, that's happened. Mr. Perry, get your cameras out of my house. Voyeurism is a crime, sir, not a date. Hacking, peeping, stalking. That is all crimes, not a date. I don't like you. Doesn't go both ways. And when I say something, one time, sir, is all I have to say it. You need to keep up with everybody else. You need to keep up with everybody else. Go find a woman that likes you. I don't. I move twice to get away from you and end all contact. I would like very much to have a protective order so that a judge tells you, Mr. Perry, you may not contact her ever again. She has asked you to leave her alone every day, all day long, for 12 years. Take the blow-off hint already. You are not what I want. You're everything I, I can't stand. Please leave me the hell alone, sir. Why do you betray, betray Jackie and your children? Chasing a woman who can't stand you. You're fighting for a lie. You're not fighting for a romance with somebody that cares about you. I don't care about you. I've done all I could do to make sure the message is very clear. I don't like you. You're gross. You're nasty. You're cruel. A man's kindness brings, brings uh, blessings. Of cr his cruelty is his downfall. You're not getting a date with me, ever. Move the fuck on. There's nothing more pathetic than a bitch who won't move on. Listen, nobody asked Neil what he thinks. What was he asked to do? Leave her alone. Mr. Perry, I don't care what you think. I said stop contacting me. Stop it. There's a reason other people don't act like you. Maybe you ought to pay attention to that. Maybe you ought to look around you and go, I guess if everyone else is not acting like me and they can get a date, maybe I shouldn't act like this. Maybe it's offensive. Maybe I'm a turn off. Maybe I need to stop. Where is Jackie and Matthew and Jordan when you sit around on your fat lazy ass bothering me all day why do you betray them that way i don't care what you think sir what i asked you is to do is listen to what i think i am disgusted by you leave me alone comply with the law we expect you to you're a dignitary we fucking expect you to comply with the law get busy working get off your lazy ass and go work Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, God.
Hey, it's too damn early for this shit. Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are, you, are you a prostitute? I'm curious. What, Sir, what, please what leave. That's okay. I don't care. Leave you me alone. All you want. I don't want proof of this. Please that leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, God. Just it's too damn early for this shit. Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are, you, are you a prostitute? I'm curious. Sir, what, please what leave. Leave me. Please, I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, no, no. Just talk leave to me. me alone. Uh, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, and I'll leave you alone. damn it. I don't want to ever talk to you. Guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please, what God happened? bless you. But what please happened? leave me alone. Just, please just, leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. Just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said, let me talk to you for two minutes. Doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes. If she said no, no means no. Rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently. Rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior. Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude. Leave me alone!